Well, friends, the long-awaited D-Day is here. And in Littleton, as in thousands of other towns, hamlets, and cities throughout our country, the churches are open for prayer. Aunt Jenny herself has just returned and has been talking out by the front gate with Martha Reynolds, one of whose boys has been in England with the invasion forces. And here's Aunt Jenny now. Folks, you heard what Danny just said. And I guess there's not one of us but has someone near and dear in the service of our country. A husband, a son, a sweetheart. Or maybe the boy down the street who was just a kid only a few years ago. That's right. And whoever they are, wherever they are, our hearts are with them today. And our thoughts go out especially to the men and boys who are invading Europe to bring liberty to the starving, conquered people. And now the time's come that these oppressed nations have been looking forward to for so long. And ladies, it's up to us home folks to help our men and boys by keeping our faith in them strong and unwavering as they fight to stamp out the forces of evil and oppression. So now, friends, let's join in a brief prayer for the safety and success of our loved ones. Dear Heavenly Father, be with our boys today. They're fighting that liberty and right may prevail. Give them the strength that is beyond human strength. Sustain and comfort them, and grant that the light of victory may begin to shine in the not-too-distant future, and that our boys will come home to us again. Friends, for the sake of our dear ones in the service, let's all firmly resolve anew this day that we'll not relax our efforts, that we'll continue to do everything in our power to help win the war, to back up our brave fighting men and women. God bless them, every one. And now for your story, Aunt Jenny. Well, friends, you remember Claire Rogers was just like a daughter to old Anthony Abbott before he died? His only son, Jim, had run away from home years ago after an auto accident. And then Jim came back to Littleton, not knowing his father was dead. That's right, Danny. Martha Reynolds told him she was at the traveler's aid desk that morning. She told him, too, that he'd inherited some money. But as she didn't know the name of his father's lawyer, she told him to go down to the newspaper office and talk to Calvin. Well, early that afternoon... Jim went to the clarion office to get a copy of the newspaper carrying the notice of his father's death. And then Calvin was saying... I was just going home for a bite of lunch, Mr. Abbott. Uh, Glad to share it with you. Well, that's uh, very kind of you, Mr. Wheeler, but I haven't time today. Oh, that's too bad. Here's the paper, Mr. Wheeler. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Pete. The article about Mr. Abbott is on the front page, along with the pictures, boss. Ah, good. Why did Pete say that? I mean, how did he know that I wanted to see the article about Mr. Abbott? Oh, people around the newspaper office have a way of putting one or two together. <laughs> we don't always get the right answer. Sometimes we learn too late to our sorrow, and but... Uh... You and Pete recognize me, too. Yes, yes. I'd like to help you in any way I can, Mr. Abbott. Well, thank you. But I'm not at all sure I'll stay here, and I had in mind slipping away with as little commotion as possible. Uh, no explanation is necessary. If you don't find what you want in the paper, just let me know. I... I decided I couldn't leave without going to my father's attorney. It was his name that I wanted to get from the paper without asking anyone for it directly. Oh, I understand. Well, I'll tell you, he's Will Hunter. His office is two blocks down the street on the right-hand side in the yellow brick building in the center of the block. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, and goodbye, sir. Goodbye, and good luck, Jim. You said it, boss. Good luck. That guy sure looks like he could stand a little luck. Yes, yes, he does, Pete. Can you feature a drip like that? Being the son of good old Anthony Abbott, inheriting all that dough, I'm looking like such a sourpuss about it. Or was it an act, a cover-up, for fear it'd show how gosh your fire tickly was a nice old guy had kicked off? I don't believe I saw Jim Abbott just like you did, Pete. His eyes were as gentle as a woman's. No, 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 not, that's not it. Uh, they were... Yeah, I know, boss. They looked like if he was a girl, he'd have been blubbering fit to drown us. And if it was an act, he can sure deliver the goods, costume and all. Boy, that suit's so thin that if he had sneezed real hard, it'd have been gone with the wind. Mr. Hunter, I'm Jim Abbott. Well, uh, well, how do you do? This is indeed a surprise. Do sit down, Mr. Abbott. Thank you. I probably should have notified you that I was coming, but I... Didn't know that I was myself until about an hour ago. You've been in town only an hour, Mr. Abbott, or may I call you Jim? If you like. 
But about coming in town, I I came in on an early train this morning, but... Oh, I see. You mean that you only learned within the hour of your father's uh, demise and the legacy he left you? No, I, I learned of that soon after I arrived. Oh, I see. It took me some time to decide whether or not I wanted to make any inquiry about the money I was told my father had left me. May I ask why you would have to uh, decide on such a matter, Mr. Abbott? Well, I think it's only fair to tell you that I still haven't made up my mind as to, to what I'll do in regard to it, but I would like very much to find out what my father's last wishes were and ask if he perhaps left any personal message for me. Yes, Mr. Abbott, there's a letter, but I do not have it in my possession. But where is it? Who has it? A girl by the name of Claire Rogers has it. She came in after her work every day and cared for your father, and he loved her like a daughter. Well, this girl was a nurse? No, it seems your father befriended her when she came here some six or seven years ago, and Claire never forgot it. Oh, I see. Now, as to the terms of the will, you are to receive a certain sum each month for the first year. The sum isn't large, but it'll be sufficient for your personal needs. Well, I wasn't thinking of my current needs, Mr. Hunter. I'm able to manage. What I want is my father's letter to me. Of course. I'll call Claire after her work and tell her you're coming for it. But first, I want to make the other terms of the will clear to you. Very well, sir. Briefly, they are this. After the year is up, you are to be given full possession of your father's entire legacy. Well, I, I don't know that I'd feel right in taking it after the way I've... In this matter, you do not have only yourself to consider, Jim. As the will, including your monthly allotment, is null and void, unless you agree within two weeks' time... To a certain stipulation your father has made. Stipulation? Well, that doesn't sound like my father. But since he made it, he must have felt he had some good reason for it. And I couldn't blame him if he'd lost all faith in me. His faith in you, Jim, never wavered. And the stipulation is that you marry Claire Rogers. Marry? Marry? Yes. Marry the girl who cared for your father so long. Oh, but, but see here... The kind of a girl I'd want to marry wouldn't be the kind of a girl who, who, who'd have me. I believe you'll regret having said that when you meet Claire Rogers. I regret having said it now. I regret ever having to, to think such a thing about any girl or about myself. But, but look at me. Shabby, lame. I'd be a pretty poor bet for any girl, even with the money, if I had to be thrown in along with it. What you're really trying to say, Jim, is that any girl who would marry you would be marrying just for the money. Isn't that it? Well, wouldn't she? Wouldn't she? What other reason could a girl who... who Oh, never mind. Please tell Claire Rogers that I'll not impose on her. And that if she'll send me my letter, we'll call it quit. Or does she know about the stipulation? Yes, she knows. And wait a minute, Jim. You better think this over a little. Claire cared for your father without thought of return for herself. Well, that sounds very pretty. But if you'd knocked around the world as much as I have, you'd know that those things just don't happen without a motive behind them. Again, I say, you'll regret those words when you meet Claire. Mr. Hunter, you may think you can tell by by looking at me, what my life has been. Only, you can't. I mean, there are certain things that I still have ideals about. Jim, it was your father's last wish expressed to me that I would promise him not to let you bolt without meeting and talking with Claire. Now, you wouldn't refuse your father's last wish just to talk with her, would you, Jim? No. No, I guess I, I couldn't do that. Good. I'll take you to. No, 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 thank you. If I must see her, I, I want to do it alone. <laughs> I've been here two hours, and we've talked about everything except what I came to talk to you about. I'd like it much better if you'd call me Claire. You see, I've known you for such a long, long time, Jim, through your father that... Well, please call me Claire. And let's not talk about anything that disturbs you this afternoon. I'm sure there are still other things that you want me to tell you about your father. You've been very thoughtful to tell me all the things you have, Oh, but... I'll remember lots more as time goes along. Do you mind if I ask you something? No. You went to the cemetery this morning, as soon as you found out about your father, didn't you? Well, how did you know? Because there were fresh flowers there. When I went on my weekly visit this afternoon after work. You mean that you... You take flowers out to him every week? He loves flowers, Jim. Somehow I believe you do too, don't you? Why, I... I mean, I saw you looking at the sweet peas there on the desk. They're out of the garden. My landlady lets us rumors plant things in. Look, all this this talk, don't do it. I, I'm pretty well washed up, and I, I don't take this sympathy very well. Oh, Jim, what a word to use between us. Us? Well, that sounds as though you had already accepted the, uh, the stipulation my father made for us to, to marry. Well, 
I have. Without ever having seen me? Why? Well, Jim, maybe I can answer that better by saying that now that I have seen you, you're just as I thought you'd be from what your father told me of you. Just as fine, just as sensitive, and just as lost. All right. If that's the way you want it, and the money means enough to you to take it, even if you have to have me thrown in with it, I guess you've earned it. Oh, Jim. I'll call you tomorrow and make arrangements for the wedding. Wedding arrangements. Well, do you suppose Claire agreed to marry Jim because of his inheritance, Aunt Jenny? Well, Danny, when a girl's had to work hard for years, money can make a big difference. But don't you go jump to conclusions. You listen next time. Because right now, I want to appeal to all you wives and mothers. In times of anxiety, you are the one the whole family looks to for hope and strength. That's right. So even though it may be difficult, I'm appealing to you to be as strong and cheerful and matter-of-fact as possible. True names are never used in Spry's real-life stories, brought to you by S-P-R-Y, Spry, the improved all-vegetable shortening. Dan Seymour speaking. last twice as long with Lux Care. Get extra wear from every pair with Lux Care. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>